Johnny Dollar. Now, why don't you get married? Uh, huh? To me. Well, I... Uh, <clears throat> Johnny Dollar. Well, will you marry me? Well, sure. Why not? Anytime you say, Janet. Janet? Janet who? Uh oh sorry. I meant Carol. Oh, you did? Mariana? No. Gladys? No. Janie? Now, now, stop that. Now, well, let's try Hildy. Uh, Marilyn? Uh, how about... No. Uh... This is Betty. Betty Lewis. No. Yes. And you listen, you... What? You knew it all the time, didn't you? Yes, dear. Just leading me on again, like you have been for all these umpteen years. But you listen to me, Johnny Dollar. Yes, dear. If it weren't for that crazy business of yours, jumping around all over the country, getting slugged and shot at, enough to drive a loving wife to drink... Yes, dear. But, Johnny, I'd trick you into a date with a preacher... What was that? Hmm? Yes, dear? Yes, dear. Yes, dear. It sounds like we're already tired, old married folks. Well, you wouldn't like that. Of course I wouldn't. Oh? That is, I, I mean, well, you know what I mean, you rascal. Well, sure I do. You drive you to drink every time I have to be away or tangle with a killer. And if you'd just stop being so darn insistent about my popping the question, why, well, who knows? Maybe I'd, uh, well... Yes? If I did stop trying so hard to land you, you'd what, Johnny? Uh, I decline to answer on the grounds it might tend to... Oh, honey, you're such a big, heartless dope. Sure am. And I'm such a shameless hussy for admitting the way I feel. But if you ever do decide to become a normal human being, get into some safe, sane, honest business that... Only Johnny. Yes, sweet? I'm afraid it's about business that I really called you. I mean, insurance business. Oh, my entire ego just flew out the window. Well, what is it, hon? I, I've got to see you right away. Betty, I'll be out there at 13325 East Maple no, Drive. Before... No, honey, I'm not at home. Okay, at the office. Then. No, dear, I'm, well, I'm not at the office either. Well, tell me where you are, where you want me to meet you. Just, uh, stay right there and wait until I call you again. Will you, please, honey? Uh, well, now, look, I just hung up on a frantic phone call from Fritz Melchior over at Continental Insurance and Trust, apparently the usual sort of emergency. I know. Huh? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, I'm... Sorry, but this is so important, honey, and since it concerns me, and if anything were to happen... Happen to you? Betty... Johnny, dear, I can't talk anymore right now, but wait. Wait until I call you and tell you where to meet me. Hey, now listen, Betty. I'll call you. No, listen. Hmm. Something very funny about this. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Insurance and Trust Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the mystery gal matter. There was something very strange about that call from Betty Lewis. Except for the end of it, I'd almost exactly the same conversation with her only a couple of days before, almost word for word. Oh, sure, the marriage talk has been going on for a long time. And why kid about it? If it weren't for this crazy, sometimes risky job of mine, I'd ask that girl to marry me in a second. And maybe someday. But she knows all that. She knows why it just doesn't make sense right now for either of us to think about it. We've agreed to that. So why bring it up again at a time when she actually had some important matter involving insurance on her mind? Important enough to stall me on whatever it was that Melchior at Continental Insurance and Trust wanted me for. I waited for her to call me back. Yeah, I waited over an hour, and then finally, though she told me she wasn't home or at the office, I called her house. No answer. I called her office, then, to see if they knew where she might be. Much to my surprise, the switchboard operator told me she was right there, had been there all day. Betty Lewis? Yeah, hi, hon. Listen, I thought you were going to call me back. Johnny, hi, dear. Well? Fancy hearing from you at this... What was that about calling you back? And I thought you weren't in the office. Oh, whatever made you think a thing like that, Johnny. Are you kidding are you? You said you weren't when I talked to you about an hour ago. Oh, gee. I might have known this would happen sooner or later. So many girls on the string, you can't even keep track Betty. of Betty. You talk to one, probably even propose to her, and then you lose track of which one it was. 
Are you trying to tell me you didn't call me on the phone an hour, an hour and a half ago? You're trying to about tell me... About some I... insurance matter, some emergency? Johnny, you're you kidding. You had to see me right away that you'd call me back about where to meet you? You're serious, aren't you, hon? I'm dead serious. So let's cut out all this nonsense and... But I didn't call you. You're... You're sure of that? Well, sure I am. The last time I talked to you was day before... What's this all about, dear? Honey, I... I'm sorry, I gotta hang up. Johnny, is something wrong? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I'll call you later. What, dear? What is it? I wish to heaven I knew. Pepsi Cola refreshes without filling. Why? Because it's truly light. Charlie, you're forgetting something. Wait, Kay, there's more. Yes, ice-cold Pepsi is the delicious refreshment that goes great at a picnic or a party. But, Charlie... And Pepsi goes fast. People like it, so keep plenty handy. There. Oh, you did fine, except for one thing. Well, I mentioned lightness and how Pepsi refreshes and how fast it goes. You left out Pepsi sociability. You know the Be Sociable song. But, Kay, I can't sing. I can. Listen. Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. Well, at least I can say this. Pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Please do. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Mystery Gal Matter. Expense account item one, $1.15 for a taxi to Fred Melchior's office at Continental Insurance and Trust. I didn't bother phoning ahead to tell him why I was so late in responding to his call for help. I found him literally pacing the floor. Oh, Johnny, thank goodness. Yeah, hiya, Fritz. Only I didn't expect you in here so soon. Sit down. Is uh, everything all right? So soon, did you say? What? And here I was, all set to apologize for not having got here when I was supposed to, nearly two hours ago. Well, as long as you called me back and asked if you might I go right on over. I called you back? Why, yes, of course. And I agreed with you it was best not to waste time coming here for the facts uh, on the No, case. no, wait a minute, Fritz. Uh, so you... I told you all about it. Though I still think it shouldn't have been gone into on the telephone. Uh, tell me about what? But since time was so important... And since you're going out there right away, might uh... Johnny, what did you say? I didn't, but I will. Now, listen to me, Fritz. There's something very screwy going on around here. Oh? What do you mean? You called me on the phone about an hour and a half, maybe two hours ago. Yes, you that's right. You asked me if I'd come on over here and see you. Yes. Now, you said you were still in bed, but that as soon as you could get shaved and dressed and a cup of coffee, you'd come on over here. Okay, so far so good. And then? Well, naturally, I, <laughs> I waited for you. Yeah? But then after half or three quarters of an hour when you didn't show up, oh, and believe me, this matter is so urgent, so pressing, so, so important. important matter. Uh, no, no, wait, let's not go into that just yet. So, so what happened when I didn't appear? Well, I decided I'd better call you again, but I didn't have a chance. Why not? Why not? Well, you know why not, because you called me back. I did, huh? Well, Yes. And as I reminded you a moment ago, you suggested that instead of wasting time coming here to the office... Only Fritz. Uh, yes? I didn't call you back. Now, <laughs> why do you say a thing like that? Of course you... Didn't? No. But Johnny... But it's pretty obvious somebody did. Oh, but I'm yeah, sure... Somebody who tried to make you think it was me, who must have succeeded pretty well. Yeah, but that's imp... Johnny. Johnny, I hope you're not joking. I am not. Because I am certain... Absolutely certain. I mean, well, how could I mistake your voice after all these years? It looks like you did, though, doesn't it? Well, then, who was it that called me and told me it was you and uh, asked me for all the details on this case that I want you to handle for us? Brother, I wish I knew. And then when I told him, told him where to go and whom to see, he agreed to get on it right away. Uh -huh. And I, thinking it was you... Oh, no. No. Oh, good heaven. Now what? Well, this all means that you haven't been out there to see him. Our client, I mean, out on East Maple Drive. Oh, Fritz. Oh, good heavens, Johnny. Oh, we're too late. Well, come on, we've got to get out there and see him. Yes, right away. Yeah, sure, anything you say. But first, would you mind telling me who this client is and what's bothering him? No, no, no time, Johnny, no time, no. You just come along, and I'll tell you all about it on the way. <laughs> Thank you. 
I hope you don't mind my driving so fast, Johnny, but uh, time, you know, time is of the essence. Time for what, Fritz? Now, why don't you just start from the beginning? Yes, 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 I will. Now, when I called and I talked to you the first time... The only time, Fritz. Oh, all right, yes, yes, yes. It must have been somebody else who knew I'd called you before, who found out for me that... Well, now listen. I'm listening. I'm now, listening. anyhow, when I talked to you, I told you I'd had a call from one of our clients. Yeah, only you didn't say who. Now, the call was from Mr. John Marshall Sawyer out there on East Maple Drive. Sawyer? The attorney? Yes, yes. Retired. Lives right across the street from, well, from a very good friend of mine. I don't know about that. I don't care. The point is that Mr. Sawyer, before he retired and came up here to live... Yeah, sure. The DA's office down in New York. That's right. Probably sent more hoodlums up the river than anybody else in the big town's history. Exactly. Including Andy Rinaldi. Andy the actor. That's right. Confidence man and suspected killer. Yeah, I had a hand in that case myself. I know. Andy the actor was a character right out of the old pulp magazine. Yes. And he was so clever at disguise, it's no wonder the police took so long to catch up with him. Yes. Now, Hey, you know, Johnny... one time he did such a perfect imitation of some big financier, looks, voice, everything, that one of the big banks handed him nearly a quarter million in cash and... and... Wait a minute. You thought that I had called you back. Yes, Johnny, yes. And Andy Rinaldi got out of prison only a few days ago. So that's who it was. So Mr. Sawyer thinks he may come here and try to get even with him. Andy disappeared, contrary to all the parole regulations and so on. But being such an actor, such a master of disguise, well, I suppose he figures he can make it just as difficult for the authorities to track him down as he did some years ago. And he's probably right. Oh, a con like that ought to be kept in the clink forever. Oh, of course, he's been reported here and there. Half a dozen innocent people have been picked up all over. Why, as far west as Los Angeles. Ah, he's too smart to travel far. The longer the trail, usually, the easier it is to pick up. The point is, Mr. Sawyer was awakened last night by somebody prowling around outside his home. Apparently just, uh, uh, casing it. Well, it could have been a common burglar. He thinks it must have been Andy the actor. Did he notify the police? No, he wants you on the job. You know Andy, and you're on to some of his tricks. Well, maybe some of them. What's more, Andy may have reason to feel the same way about you as he does about Mr. Sawyer. That phone call to you pretending to be me, somehow he must have found out you'd call me. But how, Johnny? But that girl who called me. Girl who? A perfect imitation of Betty Lewis. I'm afraid I don't understand. Hey, Fritz, you better step on it. You say... A girl called Yeah, to stall me off, it had to be. To maybe keep you away just long enough for him to get out here. Come on, faster, Fritz. Anything you say, but listen, Johnny. The point is that if Andy comes around the again tonight... The point is that he may have decided not to wait until tonight. What? Come on, let me take the wheel, Fritz. we got to make time. We made time, all right. But all along the way, I kept reminding myself that if those phony calls had been meant to delay me they couldn't have hoped to keep me away for long. In other words, Andy the actor was ready to take care of Mr. Sawyer right now. I hoped and prayed we wouldn't be too late. Sawyer was an old man, hardly a match for a killer. All right, now. Now, here we are. And now look, Johnny. The front door of his house is wide open. Now, that isn't right. Come on, Fred. Don't waste time talking about it. Oh, no. We're too late. Fred, flat against the wall. Stay flat against the wall. No. Look! What? The body fallen there in the doorway. Yeah. Yeah. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. Have a camel cigarette. Change to Camels. The Camel blend of caustic tobaccos has never been equal for real smoking satisfaction. Have a real cigarette. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. 
Now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. It was not the body of Mr. Sawyer lying there in the doorway of his home. But then it was Sawyer who slowly stepped out onto the porch where Fritz and I were still flat against the wall. He stood there quietly for a brief moment, then handed the still-smoking 38 to me. Here, Johnny. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Sawyer. Only one shot? The first one you heard was from his gun. I'm sorry about this, about killing a man, but I'm afraid he gave me no choice. It's Andy the actor, all right, Johnny. Yeah. Look, here, these false sideburns, the mustache. Is he still alive, Fritz? Yes, yes, he's still alive. Thank you. Then you better call an ambulance and the police. Yes, yes, sure. Well, Mr. Sawyer, hey, and you know something? You may have saved my life, too. I followed the ambulance into the hospital in the hope Andy the actor would come, too. There were some things I wanted to ask him about the girl, the actress, who'd call me on the phone to hold me at my apartment until he could carry out his planning as Mr. Sawyer. But Rinaldi stayed unconscious, so I took a cab back to my place. That's item three, a dollar and a half. As I walked up to the door, a man from the phone company came around the side of the building. Hey, excuse me, aren't you Mr. Johnny Dollar? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I've been hoping you'd come home. Uh, you want to check your phone for me now? Oh, something the matter with my phone? Oh, there sure was. Huh? Yeah, somebody put a tap on that line of yours. Uh, you wouldn't have any way of knowing it, but so that, we that... have ways of knowing down at the phone company. Yeah, so that's how Andy and the girl, whoever she is, got to know our voices. Yeah, a lot of people think they can get away with tapping a phone line, yeah, but sure. believe me, Mr. Dollar, they can't get away with it for long. They took off the line in the basement. Do you have any idea who might have done it? Yeah, and uh, no. What? Well, Andy, the actor, for one. Uh, what's but that? who the girl is? Hmm. Hey, Mr. Dollar, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing you need to worry about. Oh, sure, whatever you say. But now, if you'll go inside and dial somebody and see if you get them okay, you see, I got a handset still hooked up to it. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, and uh, the cops have already been notified, so if they come around asking questions... Okay, thanks. Okay, fella, you can get off this line. It's all right. Huh? Yeah, sure. What? Is that you, Johnny? Yeah, Betty. Oh, thank goodness. Now, listen, tell me one thing. No, you listen. Johnny, can you come out here to my house right away? Betty, listen to me. Night before last, we went to the movies. I know, I know, but Johnny... We got there I... in the middle of the picture. I know. What part of the picture? What? If it was you with me, you know what part of the picture. Well, it was right when Jimmy Stewart walked up to the front of the courtroom to the judge. Okay, okay, you're you, all right. Oh, Johnny, I haven't the least idea what this is all about, but can you come out here and see me right away? I've got a surprise for you, and honest, honey, it's a really important one. Betty. I mean, she's a really important one. She? Yes, dear. Well, you don't mean to say that you... I'm on my way. <laughs> Come on, come on into the house. Now listen, Betty, if this is some kind of a oh, gag... Oh, listen, Jim, honey, cross my heart, but listen. Yeah? I came home from the office early. Uh-huh. I had to walk the last couple of blocks because I ran out of gas. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, you and somebody else came charging up in a car to that house across the street. You were here where then? that nice old Mr. Sawyer. You there. were right here? Yes, but I suddenly got too busy to call at you or anything. You see, I was just letting myself in through the back door. Okay, now, this surprise you're you talking about. I'd forgotten my key to the front door, so I had to sneak in the back one. I always leave that key under the mat. Honey, will you get to the point? But the key wasn't there. And the back door was already open. Oh, go on. I started in quietly. And then I heard a couple of shots over there at Mr. Sawyer's house. Yeah. And Johnny. Yeah. There in my living room, standing behind the drapes of the front window and with a gun in her hand, was this girl. The girl. Standing there watching across the street so intently that she didn't hear me come in. She started aiming the gun over at you and that man who was with you and Mr. Sawyer who'd come to the door. Yeah, well, listen, look, so let's I go inside. So I up and... behind her and... Well, I'm afraid I kind of ruined one of my nicest vases on her head. And you've got her? You've got her inside? All tied up with all the clothesline I could find. Oh, honey, I love you dearly. Where is she? Here. Right here in the living room. Oh, great. What a girl. You... Holy. You must have really clouded her. Well, I did. But when she came to and started talking, 
Well, honey, this burglar, or whatever she is, well, she started talking her head off, trying to tell me I didn't understand. Well, how could she with that game? And you know something? She sounded so much like me, and I got so tired of listening to that voice. Well, that's the reason I put that gag in her mouth. Well, are you proud of me? Don't you agree? She must have had something to yeah, do with it. Right. Oh, Johnny. You know something? I love you, gal. Oh, now, that's what I like to... Oh, honey. Why don't you and I just... And you preach to me about getting mixed up with people like this? Had any sense, I'd turn you over my knee and I'd... <laughs> yeah, rascal. Uh, this is much more fun. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Eh, what a gal. And maybe someday... <clears throat> yeah. Expense account total, including... Uh, that's funny. Something or someone seems to have somehow diverted my attention for the moment from anything as trivial as an expense account. Trivial. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Hi. Maybe you'll recall this tuneful reminder of times past. <laughs> This is Dennis James with something else worth remembering. It's this. You're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. See, it's the normal, natural way to youthful regularity. The whole brand content of Kellogg's All Brand supplies your system with all the bulk-forming food that you need every day. There's only one All Brand. It's Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve irregularity from lack of bulk, as millions do, with a bowl full of Kellogg's All Brand each morning. A double L hyphen B R A N. It's Kellogg's All Brand. Now here's our star to tell you about next week's program. Next week I'll tell you about the biggest deception that was ever pulled by me. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Jerry Hausner, Harley Bear, and Peter Leeds. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Suspense is next on the CBS Radio Network. You know, Dooley, I've been reading up on hypnosis. Come here and let me try it on you. I'm an officer of the law and don't approve of making a man divulge his secrets. However, I'll stand by in case there's criminology involved. I just want to clear up some of his problems, Officer Sud. But I haven't got any problems. I'm the soul of contentment. Maybe that's your trouble. You're too contented. Lie down, Dooley. You're going to sleep. I feel so good. He's under my influence. Now, little tyke, get up. Go straight to the beer of your choice. Astounding. He's heading for Utica Club. Cause Utica Club will still take the trouble to age beer the natural way. Utica Club, you see. He's got no problem. He's a happy, well-adjusted beer mob. Brewed by the West End Brewing Company of Utica, New York. Radio 59, WROW, Albany, New York.